from the President's Day holiday. It's great to see you and have you watching CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus at the CNN Center. Today's show starts with a number 780 million. That's almost half the population of China. It's more than twice the population of the United States. And 780 million is the number of Chinese under some form of travel restriction as their government tries to stop the spread of the Wuhan coronavirus. As we've reported, it's spread around the world, but China has been hardest hit. 70,000 people there have been infected with the virus. 1,770 have died there from it. That's about 2.5% of those who catch the disease in China. Deaths have also been reported in Hong Kong, the Philippines, Japan, and France, and cases have been reported in more than 24 countries on almost every continent. There's no vaccine or cure for the new coronavirus. Some people get severe symptoms and develop pneumonia. Some people have almost no symptoms at all. And quarantines have been put in place in China and abroad in an effort to protect those who don't have it from those who do. Aboard the Diamond Princess, that's a cruise ship that's been docked in Japan for two weeks, at least 456 people have tested positive for the coronavirus. There were roughly 3,700 people aboard in total. More than 300 Americans who were on the ship have been allowed to travel back to the U.S., but they'll reportedly be quarantined again on American soil for another 14 days. The World Health Organization, which is part of the United Nations, is not officially classifying the new coronavirus as a pandemic, a disease epidemic that spreads throughout the world. Officials there say they're not seeing the virus spread widely in individual communities outside of China. But for those inside China, the scenes are eerie and the economic impact is growing. You're looking at the post-Lunar New Year holiday rush on the streets of Beijing. Most years, you'd see millions of migrant workers pouring back into China's capital. But this year, a much slower pace and thin crowds. The normally bustling shopping districts, desolate. On the outside, at least. And think you'd find more life indoors? Health checkpoints like this one screen people at every entrance of this shopping mall. Sanitized only to enter a sterile and near empty space. On any other given Sunday, especially in winter, malls like this one would be packed with people. Instead, they're pretty much the only ones here. Popular Beijing restaurants, like this one known for their Sichuan cuisine, have had no need to change out the white tablecloths for weeks. Many are scared to even talk face to face to others, let alone share a meal with them. But there's still a need to make money. And there's still a demand for fresh produce. Instead of wasting their supplies, the restaurant staff has set up tables outside their storefront, creating a makeshift farmer's markets of sorts. They can't operate because of the epidemic, so they need to sell out the stocks. It's convenient for customers like Zhang Rui. He's been working remotely in IT for about a week. His company, like many here in Beijing, encouraging their employees to work from home. But he's noticed a slump in company productivity. Uh, it's not as efficient as working in the office because it's not very convenient if colleagues are not physically together. Zhang is still among the fortunate ones. The outbreaks left many without jobs to clock into. Huang Qiyun video chatted with us from Anhui in central China. She, like many migrant workers, had expected to travel back to Beijing to return to her job as a nanny. My boss told me that he would leave for America. I asked him when he would come back, but he said he might not return. Now jobless, she's living off the two months of extra pay her former employer provided her, but that's draining with each passing day. I just stay at home and don't go out. And the government asks us not to go out as well. I just stay at home with my family. And even if she wanted to return to Beijing immediately, she would be expected to self-quarantine for two weeks. That's two more weeks without pay. Many migrant workers facing similar financial struggles. As the government's efforts to stop the spread of the virus intensify, for now at least, there is no containing the growing economic uncertainty. David Culver, CNN, Beijing. 10 second trivia. What animal would you find in the family acridity? Aphid, marmot, seahorse, or locust? In the family acridity, you'll find grasshoppers and locusts. Imagine seeing an approaching cloud that's massive, 37 miles long and 25 miles wide. And instead of water or dust, it's a cloud of locusts. That's the size of just one of the swarms that's descended this year on eastern Africa. Specifically, these are desert locusts, the most destructive type of locust that eats food 
And that's terrible news in a region that's food insecure, meaning there are already problems with people getting enough to eat. The United Nations says this is the worst invasion of desert locusts in 25 years. What might have made it so bad was a cyclone, a major storm that hit parts of Somalia and Ethiopia last December. That brought a lot of rain to the region, and that creates the best conditions for these pests to breed. The United Nations wants the world to contribute more than $75 million so pesticides can be sprayed to kill the insects. Ravenous and ruthless, locusts have been known and feared by the world's most ancient civilizations, but their biblical infamy is all too real today. Right now, millions of these insects are sweeping across the farmlands of East Africa. Some reports say there are billions destroying crops and threatening livelihoods. For farmers across the region, this is the sound of danger. We depend a lot on this season, and we worry that the locusts will destroy our harvest and we will end up remaining hungry throughout the rest of the year, waiting for October when we have the next cropping season. This year's locust invasion is so bad that the UN is warning of a serious food crisis in Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania and Somalia. The UN's Food and Agriculture Organization says massive food assistance now may be needed. There's already 13 million people in that region that are in acute food insecurity. This is just one level below famine. 75% of those people live in areas that are now currently infested with desert locusts. Somalia has already declared a national emergency. And the UN warns this could become the most devastating plague of locusts in living memory if the world doesn't step up against the onslaught. We have a very small window in order to achieve this before the next planting season. If we don't get the help that we're appealing for or for some reason that the, the control operations are not successful, the locusts, they just continue to breed. And between now and June, there could be a 400-fold increase of locusts. Climate experts are blaming unusual heavy rainfall and cyclones, which provide ideal environments for rapid breeding for this year's massive swarms. And with wetter and hotter weather than usual forecast until May, they warn the worst is yet to come. Becky Anderson, CNN. this happened in February, it was time to own the night like the 4th of July. Cause baby, it's a firework. The Guinness world record for the biggest one ever. Its shell was more than five feet in diameter and it weighed 2,800 pounds as much as a compact car. It took explosives to get the thing off the ground, but once it did, it lifted almost a mile high before onlookers in Colorado were left in awe, awe, awe. It was even brighter than the moon, moon, moon. And it's no wonder why, when the colors burst, viewers got such a charge out of it. Critics might have called it a waste of space, but when its makers ignited the light and let it shine, it would be okay to say it was very impressive. If you're not familiar with that song, those puns are a total dud. But our viewers in Sioux Falls, South Dakota aren't. Whittier Middle School has been subscribing to our YouTube channel. For those looking for the shout out tips, be sure you do that too to subscribe on YouTube and check out the community tab. I'm Carl Azus for CNN.